<clears throat> the sicha we're about to learn is beautiful. It's just so relevant in our lives. And it, it, it fundamentally goes to the way we see one another, the imperfections in one another, and what it reflects on ourselves. It's a famous Nakuda that we've always heard in the name of the Baal Shem Tev, but we could actually explore it in a deeper way, the way the sicha does. So the sicha bases itself off two parts of our parsha, which seemingly unconnected. One we're talking about when Hashem's telling Noyach which animals to bring into the teva, mina behema tahoida, from the pure behema, so mina behema shedinen, and tahoida behema, that's not pure. Say the Chazal in the Mark Psachim, a person should not use a negative or a good, a disgusting definition, because you see that the Torah added eight letters instead of saying, uh, it says, and Rashi brings that Gemara and says that that's why um, these three words, which is Yud Gimel Oisius, could have been Atmea, which is only five Oisius, and that's how we saved uh, the Torah added eight letters. To look after a cleaner way of expression. Now, we see it not only in language, we see it in a different in the way of seeing. And that's later on in the Parsha where um, Chum points out to Shem and Yefes that their father is uh, naked. And it says, Shem and Yefes made sure that they shouldn't see Erva Savim. They walked backwards, and their heads were backwards. But Erva Savim later on, they didn't see their father's nakedness. And Hashem gave up. A reward for that, Baruch Hashem Lekei Shem, B'ichnan, Eved Lama, etc. Yafel Lekei Miyafes, beauty, etc. The Rebbe says, let's explore the second story. After we said that they walked backwards, why do you have to say every seven Yom Lairo? They didn't see their, their father's, you know, embarrassment. Obviously, if they walked backwards, that's the outcome. We, we could have figured that out ourselves. So we could understand this by introducing and exploring the teaching of the Baal Shem Tev, who tells us that when somebody, and the, the, the sorry, the reference that he brings over here from the Baal Shem Tov is from the Ma'ar Naim, from the Chernobyler, and the Toldus Yaakov Yosef, um, which is also one of the, 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 the senior student of the Baal Shem Tov, etc. That says when we see bad in somebody else, it's a proof that the bad is within us. And just like someone looks in a mirror, in pod of Nikim, if the if one's face is clean, they're not going to see any dirt. But if they see dirt, it means that the face is unclean. So too, if I see in you dirt, it means my face is dirty. Uh, I understand. How do you know that? Why is it not possible that that the other person has the problem? And I'm clean. I'm perfect. I'm beautiful. And the explanation is, and the Rebbe bases the sort of sefer the sichus of the pidi kedebe tovshin, he tovshin tov five. Seven, um, five, 5700, 1940, that every single event that happens in this world is Bashka Chapratis. And so, too, the fact that you see negative in someone else, it's not by chance, but it's because Hashem set it up that way. And because Hashem did not create anything in this world, Levatala, for no reason, everything has purpose, as the Gemara says, it's impossible that Hashem would cause you to see something for no reason. There must be Aida. Now, how do I know that the Haida is the lesson is that I have to know? Um, sorry, why do why does the lesson have to be through me seeing you? And the answer is because I'll call Shem Because um, my love of my love of oneself, Avasatsma covers it. And call on Nigoim Adam Daya Chutzmi Nigayatma. A person sees all Nigoim, all afflictions besides oneself. Therefore, the only way for a person to acknowledge their own weakness is to see it by somebody else. And when they see the, how low it looks and the evil in the other person, that makes a person think and sit there saying, gosh, my, my weaknesses are also disgusting and uh, make sure that, that I, I work on them. It says that ever like this. But ultimately, each and every one of us has a mitzvah to admonish and help the other person go on the right path. So who says the fact that I see your negativity or you see my negativity means that it's, a, it's an us. No, no, I'm seeing it to help you. Well, that, that's it. I'm seeing the negative in you to help you. And the Rebbe takes this question in a whole different, like much deeper. We know that B'nai Yisrael are not means to an end. It's not that the, the, that the Yidden accomplished something outside of them. Like everything else in the world, even 
higher worlds, Elam is Yenim, the Bishvil Yisrael, Bishvil Atari, there are means to an end. The Negisrael are the intention. And not only by in general, every year, every year that has to say, Bishvili Nivda Elam. And no yid is a, a, a means to an end for somebody else. I'm here for myself. Not in a selfish way, but I'm here to do my own avayda. So it can't be that I'm seeing the chisroinus in somebody else only for the sake of me. So, so, so the other guy is just a means to an end. The other, the other guy's weakness is it's not for him to fix. It's only for me to fix my own. There has to be something. There has to be something that I see it in the other person, not only for me, but for, for me to fix that person because that's the person who has it. So the Rebbe, again, the Rebbe took this from two questions. Number one, there's a mitzvah here, so maybe that's what I'm seeing. And number two, am I saying that the other guy is just a means to an end for me? So to understand this, the Rebbe says you have to understand back to the first thing we spoke about, not um, Noyach when he was uh, embarrassed, but regarding the animals that aren't pure. The Gemara says, don't say anything in Inappropriate. And then the Gemara continues and says, That person should always talk clean, from a clean Lushen. As we see that when a man has an omission, the Torah calls it Merkav. When a man has an omission and then sits on something, it's called Merkav, he's riding. And by a woman, it says, Meshav, she's sitting. Why? Because riding implies that, a, that the legs are split, and that's an inappropriate way of referring to a woman. Now, the Gemara asks, three times that it's, we see that there is the word riding regarding women. And after the Gemara discusses it, and the Gemara offers an answer, comes the question, and in Torah, does it not say the word Tame? I understand. What do you mean? Like, that's the fundamental question. The, the word Tame says much more times in the Torah than it says Merkav regarding women. So if you're trying to prove that the Torah doesn't always use Lashon why don't you use the big question? Tame is said hundreds, if not thousands of times. Says the Rebbe, when it comes to halacha, we know it has to be clear. So tamay is tamay, tar is tar. There's no, um, you know, words that are ambiguous because you don't want to talk in a straight fashion. And there's no room for lashnikia in that space if it's going to cause any ambiguity. Only in stories is there that the Torah will use asherin and tahira and use a bit more ambiguous. And therefore, 99% of the time that it says Tame, it's halachic. There's very few times that it says Tame in the context of a story. So therefore, it's not the big question. And only after the Gemara asks various times that it says regarding woman America, does it say, is there never a time that it says Tame regarding um, a story? Now, what do we learn from here? That... When you have to say halacha to somebody else, you have to say clearly it's tummy. But when it's referring to tumah, not as a psak halacha, then you don't have to say it because it's part of the story. Like we see that the Gemara says a story, like the, the sorry, the Pasuk says a story when a man has an event, he has an omission at night. He has to go outside the camp in times of war, even though it's talking about the halacha there. But because now it, it's not talking, it's not saying to you, this is your psak, this is your Allah thing. It's talking about a case, a story. So we'll stay over there and say, Asher lo yiyatar, we'll stay a bit ambiguous. And so too, just, not in, just, just like in speech, when it's unnecessary to talk straight, we'll stay, we'll go around. So too, when you see. And that's where we get back to our nikuda. When I see, I'm talking about me. When I see that yid did something that's inappropriate, I have to see the halacha lamaisa of the thing. Okay, it's wrong. What can I do about it? What can we fix? How can we get the person back on the job? That's what I want. But when I'm hearing something negative about somebody else, I'm not only seeing the next step, but I'm focusing on the, neg on the bad of that person. And there's a focus. There's like, gets to me. 
I feel that that the, the person has bad, that's a lie that my face is dirty. Because again, only when it comes to pure Allah, what do I have to do, Tommy? The second I'm starting to live in kach, in the story, in the narrative, and defining that person that way, then the problem is with me. Nothing Hashem created is for a waste. Every detail is a So the fact that Abish just saw, showed you something that needs to be fixed, that's number one. You have to take care of that person. You have to fix the person because that person's not a means to an end only. The person's an end of itself. But the fact that you see it in bad, you don't only see it as something that needs to be dealt with, but you see it as bad, that's because it's a mirror. Otherwise, you wouldn't have felt the negativity. You just know, okay, what do I have to do about it? And that's what, this will explain what the Pasuk says, that ever saviyam even though they walk backwards, it has to focus on, focus on the fact, ever saviyam Why? Because the point is to tell us not only that they didn't see ever saviyam in a physical sense, but more, they didn't feel. There was no bad. They didn't, they focused to, exclusively, what do I have to do? Cover that, okay, that's it. Ever saviyam, they didn't see. And that's the difference between them, the, the, them and their brother Cham. He by Yarcham, Cham saw. He looked at it. He saw it in a bad light. And the Rebbe talks about it from a Chassidus perspective. Cham is Chamimus, warmth, which is on the on the left side, and therefore he saw the negativity of of of, of the alcohol that uh, that Nayak drank, which is also an Indian of Chamimus, warmth. Now, even though the Rebbe says, even though the Chamimus of Cham is more edel, it's, it's more refined than, than, than the drunkenness of Nayach, nevertheless, he had a bit inside of himself. So Nayach Taka did something wrong, got drunk and kind of uh, lost control. But Cham saw it and it was a reflection on himself a bit. But Shem and Yefes, which are from the right and the middle, by them, this Ra was totally negated. It wasn't even there at all not even bedakus to dakus, and because they were clean, they didn't see it. And that's the lesson that each and every one of us has to have a nice test. When we hear or see something not good about a fellow yid, besides the fact that you can't tell it to other people, that's pasha lashen hada, and don't do what Cham did, that he did go repeat. Not only did he see, but he went and informed his brothers outside, but more than that, don't focus on the bad in your friend. See what you could do, how you can admonish them and fix and do everything possible that you should not see the bad in them, even when you're dealing with them. Can you believe it? I don't see anything. I, I know it has to be dealt with, but I don't see bad in you. And when you focus like this, then you get the brachas of Hashem, Baruch Hashem Lekei Shem, V'yichnan Nebet Lamay, and Yafta Lekei Yafta, you get all the brachas of Shem and Yefes, and you, you, you get to be Kalim Matera, a vessel to learn Torah, because the Kli to Torah is Shalem, and you bring Shechina, in Baale Shem Beis Megish Ashlishi through Achtos and Avas Yisrael, and it should be Bekadev Mamish and Lever then references Perik Lamed Beis in.